Greetings, this is Ty Brown with Athletic Director U. I am here on campus at Fresno State and I'm joined by Terry Toomey. Terry is the Director of Athletics here at Fresno State. Thanks for having me on campus with me, Terry. Ty, thank you so much. It's good to have you here in Fresno. Yeah, I'm glad to be on with you. You know, you, you've been here since 2018 and your experience, AD at UC Davis, Claremont Mudge, Scripps, Dominican University, which is now you're here as FBS, FCS, Division Two, and Division Three, the full gamut of uh, college athletics. You coach football at UCLA, the Denver Broncos, worked in the front office at the 49ers. Combined in, with professional and collegiate athletics, you have over 30 years of uh, combined uh, experience. I think you you are somebody great to talk to, to talk about sports, college athletics, and leadership, which is why I wanted to come here. So. I'm happy to be here. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. What I want to touch on first is your your leadership philosophy. You know, we at Athletic Director U, we had you on a uh, podcast, the Rising AD, and you talked about your uh, solve philosophy here at Fresno State, the uh, serve, no, solution-oriented oriented leaders, leaders value valuing everyone. Others, valuing mm -hmm. everyone. Okay, yeah. yeah, excellent. So, and I thought that, I thought that was great, right? Especially solutions, right? A good leader finds problems to solve and solve those problems, right? And so I right. want to make sure everybody in the department is like that. I imagine that is a buildup of the various leadership experiences you have uh, garnered throughout your career and also the leaders you work with th throughout your career. Talk to us a little bit about your leadership philosophy. Sure, it, 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 it is a combination of a variety of experiences right. that I've had uh, and, and I've been blessed by being around amazing individuals and amazing leaders, whether on the athletic front or in the academic realm. Um, I think all of our the leaders that we've seen have all kind of went through one piece of the puzzle that all ties them together, and it's all about empowerment. They've they've figured out a way in which to make sure that I, who was in service uh, for the institution and under their leadership, um, truly felt like a valued member right. and a valued person, and therefore my efforts really mattered, no matter if I was the the lowest of the low up on the totem pole or if I really had uh, more of a say at the end of the day, um, all the contributions matter. And so therefore that's where I think that combination of experiences have led me to that solve principle and, and how I try to lead my team here at Fresno State. Right, now you, you've worked with a number of different people when you're in those leadership roles. Um, I wonder if you have seen some of the people you work with go on to take on some of your philosophy in terms of leadership, or even here at uh, Fresno State when you talk about the solve. I, I do feel as though, uh, I wouldn't say uh, brilliant minds or great <laughs> minds. Uh, I, I don't put myself in that category, but I, I will say that I, I think there is some um, familiarity as it relates to uh, what you see and what you garner. Uh, you know great coaches and great administrators, we all kind of borrow from each other, you know, and, and so I, I am not afraid to say I borrow from some of the greats here in in in, in ADU, quite honestly. I, I, I really feel as though this venue gives you so much great information. So I, I'm constantly looking to for new answers and new ways to think about things and view them. So yes, I've been, I think I've been blessed, uh, but I, I think I've, I've taken more than I've given <laughs> for sure. You know, working for Bill Walsh mm -hmm. uh, at the 49ers, working for uh, the great Terry Donahue uh, at UCLA as, as not only a player, but also as a coach, right. um, really has made me better and, and helped me better serve. But, you know, great Judy Holland, who's the women's athletic director at UCLA at the time when I was a student athlete, learning from her, you know, so there, there's just so many different people. You know, I, I'm I'm a I am a believer in learning people's philosophies, adjusting it, and making your own. I, I have a saying that I say at the end of all podcasts and videos, and it's my leadership philosophy. It's that the role of a leader is to create and maintain an environment that people want to be a part of. And I actually got that from my old coach, who was a, a high school football coach in Minnesota for almost 60 years, named uh, Ron Stolsky. And I heard him say it one time, and he and I had a conversation about it, and it just made sense to me, right? And, and no matter where you are as a leader, you want to create and maintain an environment that people want to be a part of. And it sounds like that's what you have, what you're doing here and what you have done in other places. And some of the leaders you mentioned, that's what they've done, too. Um, and of course, when you talk about football, I spent 13, 14 years at the American Football Coaches Association, which I'm sure you're familiar with, having been a football coach. And what I found that I like about the game is um, I thought it was X's and O's. When I started working for the association, I realized that it was the ability of coaches to get uh, a bunch of different A personalities 
facing the same direction, working towards the same purpose and goals, right? Mm -hmm. and, and thinking about college athletics, I, I'm sure you, I've heard you say it before, you understand the importance of football to campus, but there's also this balance of understanding and knowing the excitement of all the other sports that they bring to campus too. Talk about the balance of that. I mean, here you know, at Fresno State, and of course you've been at other places too. Sure, where football sure. I, I, you know, it's so funny you mentioned that. And, and I, I got to see it firsthand here at Fresno State uh, where the rolling tide of excitement and enthusiasm for the university in its entirety uh, began in fall with football. Uh, in my first year here, uh, I got to work with a wonderful coach, Jeff Tetford. And Jeff was uh, a consummate bulldog. He's an alum from here. And he had the, the institution excited again about football. Uh, that in turn uh, turned into an amazing year. We had a very successful football campaign, followed by a, an amazing basketball campaign, amazing baseball campaign. I mean, literally everything was aligned as it relates to that. And I can't help but think that that started with football and what it brought to this community. Uh, I think the great thing about football is, is the fact that not only is it a, a great sport, but I don't think there's another, uh, I don't know, endeavor where you literally can bring 40 to 50,000 people together at one point, all moving in the same direction. You know, and, and, and basically saying, I am here to support these young people, this university, this community. Right. And I think that's what we do really well here at Fresno State. That's that's one of our, I, I would say, the hallmark of being a bulldog is our community. And we talk about the red wave and what the red wave means. Uh, that's truly what it is, the epitome of this community. So so and that all kind of resonates in football. Uh, but I would be the first to say, and I think all of our other coaches feel this way as well. They feed on that and their success you know, really does help support that whole initiative. So I love the fact that, perfect example, my women's softball team this past year had an amazing campaign, you know, and, and they now have started us, that success that we're ending this spring with will lead us into what I think will be a great fall. So it all we all feed off of each other. Yeah, and, and there's, no, there's no doubt the excitement of sports that aren't football too, right? Yeah. When, when you watch women's basketball, you watch softball, like you mentioned, and you watch a number of just the sports that, you get excited when you, you score a goal, you you get a run, yeah, all those kind of things, right? I, I think people fail to understand that when you start talking about the financial aspect of, of college athletics. And yeah. So, yeah, yeah, football, football, and that's where football does really come into play, right? right? Football, not only is it the ultimate energizer mm -hmm. uh, for all, all sports, it does have tremendous financial considerations. And, and those financial considerations allow for or facilitate these experiences for for so many others, uh, and and I think that's a that's a I don't want to call it a burden, but that's a that's an accountable point that I think all football people recognize and appreciate um, that we love serving the university, uh, and and if football can be the vehicle for success for the university its entirety, then let's do that. And I think it can be. I think every university that has football in its purview uh, should see it as that type of vehicle. Yeah. You've made a, a number of different hires since you've been here, which, um, you know, are, are very important when you talk about college athletics, right? And the people leading the student athletes who represent your university and help to enhance the academic mission of the university. Talk to us a little bit about your hiring philosophy. Of course, Jeff Tedford, uh, Jeff Tedford left and he's, you know, he's a he was a veteran guy, alum, like you said, and had success at other programs. And, and then you replaced him with Kelly DeBoer and the other hires that you've made, too. Uh, talk to us about you know, how you uh, look at somebody and analyze whether or not they would be a good fit for this institution to lead the student athletes. Sure. I, I think the thing is that the value principle of all of our, of our coaches are, are somewhat similar in the fact that they are um, student centric. Uh, I wouldn't say that every decision, of course, is going to be in the you know, supporting whatever the students want. That's not what student centric means. It really does mean that you are very much vested in the development of people, of these young students uh, in, a, in a host of different ways that are that have athletic components, but also go beyond their athletic endeavors. And, and I think every coach that I've looked at and had ability to work with, uh, and particularly that works here, has that as their main focus. Um, so, and, and with that, because they're so student centric, um, all the different elements that we've kind of considered as being some of the things that are, um, I wouldn't say harming, but some of the new things that are going to be affecting our programs, whether it's 
uh, name, image, and likeness or the portal where you have all these young people who want to leave, those things get dampened a little bit when a student understands that, you know, these people here at this institution are here for the long haul for me. They, they want to make sure that I am successful far beyond my, my playing time. And in order to do that, the first point of contact or the first person that touches their experience in their lives is the coach. So you have to have a coach who has that kind of value set. Uh, that along with having an extremely meticulous nature and, and having and being really astute in, in your athletic endeavor, all those things kind of lead towards what I see as a, a, a real asset. Uh, all of our coaches are assets to this university. Right. How, how intense is your research process when you're looking? I mean, I guess Kalen DeBoer was kind of a cheat code, right? Because he had been here and you, you, you know him a little sure, bit. Sure, right? I knew him. I but, knew him. But, uh, but just in, in general, other programs you, uh, when you were athletics director and even working in uh, the front office in the NFL, sure. you have to research people that you want to make sure they're fit and they're meticulous, like you say. Talk to us a little bit about that. Sure. I, I think that the thing that any administrator learns uh, after a very short period of time is you never stop evaluating coaches, whether they're yours or, or someone else's. So you're constantly looking at and, and talking about and trying to understand the, the entire paradigm of coaches. And, and what they do in different areas. So you're constantly evaluating that, constantly looking at that. Um, so the work is in depth. Um, it is it is more than just talking to colleagues and, and, and having a feel. It's more than just watching video and watching how they perform. It's more than watching press conferences. It's truly trying to get the inner workings of that individual. It, it's, it's, it really is peeling back the layers to understand how this person is built and how, they're, how they work and how, how they can work in a collective of your organization. Uh, I think you can find amazing coaches who may not be great fits. They're amazing coaches though. They just don't fit for you at that point in time at that university. Right. So I think there's so much that goes into the selection of coaches and you're right, the research piece is, it starts there. It's gotta be intense. I, now this is a non-athletic director experience question, but <laughs> You know, the, the circumstances for changing coaches, sometimes good, sometimes bad. I mean, you never know what the circumstances are, but, but, is, but is the, the hiring process something that you look forward to as an athletic director? I, I, think, you, I think as an institution, you always look for uh, bringing new assets to the fold and, and, and you're excited about that opportunity. You're excited about what they can bring and, and basically what the horizon looks like. You know, so you're, you're excited about that. Uh, I think uh, you also, you know, have to have, uh, extreme grace as it relates to uh, those who are moving on uh, in, a, in a coaching endeavor and, and really appreciate their contributions because at the end of the day, as I said before, it's all in service of our students. So uh, I, I think our students, you're, you're excited about what this new teacher is going to put in the classroom. That's, that's what you're excited about. Learning, learning is an exciting element. And when you're in athletics, you're learning. You know, we always say you either win or you learn, you don't lose, you're learning, right? You know, from that, from that mishap or. Which, which is excellent, right? What yeah. are these new teachers gonna teach our student athletes? That's I exactly that's right. Excellent. I, I talked to two, two more topics here before we wrap, cause I know you, you gotta go and I don't wanna take up all of your time. The first one is when you talk about transition, right? New president here at Fresno State uh, was a provost, I believe yes. before. And so you, you knew him mm -hmm. and, uh, you look at him in a in a different light now. I mean, you know him as a person, but now he's the CEO of a university, sure. right? Which yeah. there are so many aspects of being a president of a university that are, are all important and urgent, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And in the last 20 years, athletics is one of those things that are important and urgent. Talk about the relationship that you've had with him as a provost and then now as a president and how that dynamic may have changed just a little bit. Now that he's the president. Of the you know, I, I think the thing that's really great about having your provost elevate to being the president is the fact that he understands your commitment to what he does right. or what she does as in, from an academic van, vantage point. So that question, that check mark, that box has already been checked. Right, exactly. So now you're you're really emphasizing what does athletics bring to this to this institution? How can we affect it? And I am uh, I feel very confident and very blessed to say that. Um, our president understands the importance of athletics. It's, it's tr it truly does define this this university far beyond our Western region. Um, I think that any athletic director who who sits in the chair for any any point of time will be will tell you that 
you are only as good as your president. Your president will allow you to ascend and move in so many different spaces. But without that alignment, without that alignment of president to athletic director to your coaches, it's very difficult to move the entire enterprise forward. So to have that alignment, to, to have a president understand what athletics can do, not only just for the university financially, but what it can do for this community and how it can engage and ha have it a real experience for all of your students. Your students come to the, and they, and they have an experience that they will remember for a lifetime through athletics. To have someone understand that truly is a blessing. And I'm, I'm fortunate to say we have that here. Yeah, which is excellent, right? Especially, you know, the person and, and they know what you value right. and you know what they value makes it great. Absolutely. Last question here. You know, at Athletic Director U, we try to make videos that someone can watch two years from now and still find value in it, right? Not necessarily timing, but but in the last maybe month or so, we've seen a number of people in the AD chair leave college athletics. And you'll have to educate me on this, but it, it seems like it's because the co college athletics has a convoluted business model of nonprofit versus nonprofit. Sure. Um, you got to raise money to beat another nonprofit, right? Which is different than nonprofits in the rest of the universe, right? Sure. Yeah. And um, people are losing and things are changing and NIL and and uh, student athletes right to organize. And, and there's a bunch of things that are the pressure of it. As an AD, you know, you're here to to make sure things run how they're supposed to run, no matter what the external circumstances are. And so they keep changing and the pressure keeps growing. Sure. I, I wonder what your thoughts on that, on, on people leaving, on just the changing nature of college athletics. You've been in a pros where there's a there's a bottom line aspect to it that's a little different than what the bottom line is mm -hmm. here in college athletics. Mm -hmm. So just your input on the nature yeah. and then people leaving and that, those kind of things. Yeah, I, I think, I think uh, basically you're asking me about evolution. Yeah. You know, we're evolving. Uh, this industry is evolving. And, and so there's a paradigm shift that's happening, right? So the, there's a, a balance that's moving where the student athletes have a different position, a different vantage point, a different view uh, in our collective model, more in the terms of partnership. Uh, and, and the partnership in terms of uh, in this educational process. And so I, I think there that some of my colleagues uh, are, are saying, you know, I've done as much as I can here. I'm going to let another person, you know, take the torch and move us forward. I think this shift is good in the fact that we've had so many great leaders here uh, in athletics and at the AD chair that have taken us to this point. Uh, and there's this new wave of innovative, talented individuals. And, I, and when I say new wave, it's not just new wave in terms of their age. It's new wave in terms of their complexion and their profile. Right. They look different. Yes, sir. You know, and I think those people have a lot to say and a lot to move and a lot to help us form and continue to grow uh, here in our industry. And so I, I think it's a healthy change. I think it's a, it should be a welcome change. Yeah. And it should be one that we should take with excitement because our, our we're, we're doing what we're supposed to be doing. We're educating students to fulfill their lives and be plentiful. And I think these new leaders are going to be able to open so many more doors uh, because they think just a little bit differently than some of the some of the ones who are departing. Exactly. And when the, when the story is told, you want the story to be told from a number of different perspectives. Correct. So it's a richer story, right? Correct. That's 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 the beauty of a university. You know, the the beauty of a university is its diversity, diversity of thought and diversity of people. Right. I'll say one thing before we wrap. Um, you know, your wife, uh, Dr. Toomey. Yeah. Gave yeah. me some direction as I was applying the MBA program, so I wanted to make sure I publicly thank you oh, and thank, thank her. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She, she enjoyed working a, with you for sure. Yeah, yeah. That, that was excellent. So this has been an excellent conversation, uh, Terry. I really appreciate you joining us here at Athletic Director. You. Oh, thank you for the opportunity. I so enjoyed. Always good to see you, my friend. Yes, sir. All right. Thank you. That was Terry Toomey. He is the director of athletics here at Fresno State, and of course, I am Ty Brown with Athletic Director. You. And keep in mind, the role of a leader is to create and maintain an environment that people want to be a part of. And as always, be better tomorrow than you are today.